We continue our breaking coverage of the end of the military operation, the end of the war in Afghanistan. The Pentagon earlier this hour announcing that the last U.S. troops have left that country. We are awaiting Secretary of State Tony Blinken. He's going to brief reporters on exactly what happens next. That is coming at the top of the hour. That's the shot um, where it will take place as soon as it commences. But right now, we get to talk to NBC News presidential historian Michael Beschloss about all of it. Um, first, your thoughts on the end of a 20-year war in Afghanistan. It's very sad. As you know better than almost anyone, we came in with noble motives 20 years ago, uh, October of 2001, a desire to punish Afghanistan for having harbored al-Qaeda uh, from its territory, was committed the attacks of 9-11, then a desire to make Afghanistan some form of a Greek democracy. We spent 20 years doing our best. It didn't work. Afghanistan was not going to be a Greek democracy. We've learned a lesson from that. But I think the thing today is we have to honor our military heroes, everyone else who risked their lives so that people could live in, in a more human way in Afghanistan. It hasn't worked in the end, but at the same time, I think it's not particularly today a day to question motives. Michael Beschloss, we're just learning um, that President Biden will address the nation tomorrow. We heard from General McKenzie, um, the U.S. CENTCOM commander. We're awaiting remarks from Secretary of State Tony Blinken. This White House is engaged in meetings as a cab at a cabinet level with veterans groups. I wonder what you make of what is a Herculean effort to communicate um, every step of, of what you said is, is, is a very, very, very challenging um, sort of end to what's been a challenging war. I, I know firsthand that the public was weary of this war um, sure. shortly after it began. This president, very much in line with public opinion about ending the war, but very much, I think, still under the Klieg lights and getting a lot of criticism from national security establishment figures. What do you, what do you make of how they're doing and how they're communicating? Well, I think they are learning lessons from earlier cases in which we did not do this so well. As you know, Nicole, it is a lot harder to end a war than it is to get into one. Lyndon Johnson in 1965 was facing the prospect of sending ground troops to Vietnam. He knew in private that that might lead to half a million Americans in Vietnam, maybe 50 or 60,000 Americans killed. He knew that in 1965. But in the end, he did not want to bear the incubus of people saying, LBJ, you're soft on communism or you are weak. He was worried it might affect his domestic program that people might not vote for Medicare in Congress if they felt that Johnson was a leader who had let down the cause of freedom in Vietnam. So Johnson made what was, in retrospect, a bad decision. Joe Biden is not making a decision, obviously, about starting a war. He's making a decision about ending one. And he may take a lot of political unpopularity from some of the things he has said and done, particularly in the last month. But I think if you look at the Vietnam example, Nicole, Gerald Ford in, in April of 1975 had to make the decision at the end to pull the plug on Saigon. Even though we now know that Richard Nixon had secretly, uh, illicitly promised the South Vietnamese government that if the North Vietnamese ever came back into South Vietnam and attacked, we'd go back with air power and we would try to win the war. So Ford was not making a decision that was preordained. But the point I'm making is this. When historians look at the war in Afghanistan, yes, they will notice things that happened during the last couple of months that are heavy on our hearts. But at the same time, what they will really pay attention to is the presidents who began and managed this war, President George W. Bush, President Obama, President Trump, and then to the extent that Joe Biden has been involved in the last couple of months, Joe Biden. And it's going to be a verdict that I think in the end will be, this began with noble motives, but you can't conduct a war that Americans do not understand and they do not support. And long before the end of 20 years, that's what happened. Joe Biden recognized it. I wonder if you can put 
this um, stewardship of this ending of the war in Afghanistan, next to his attempt to vaccinate a country, 40 percent of which would rather take horse dewormer than an FDA-approved vaccine, next to what appears like natural disaster after natural disaster after natural disaster because of climate change. I mean, what is the historical parallel for having to manage those three sort of front burner crises at once? That's what presidents do, as you know, Nicole. I mean, President George H.W. Bush had to deal with the invasion of Kuwait at the same time as he was doing budget talks with Congress that led to the raising of taxes. That's how they're paid their salaries. But at the same time, I think if you look at what Joe Biden has done, I think he's learned one of the lessons of Vietnam, which is our troops were treated horribly when that war ended. In some cases, they were spat upon. They were certainly were not given parades. And I know that under Joe Biden, he will make sure that all Americans, despite the fact that they listen to presidents a lot less than they did 50 years ago, will honor them as they should.